Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back and I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. But if you're new and maybe you like what you see, please consider subscribing because we have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty. And this video is about to be a very fun one because I have tested these products out and I am now ready to share my thoughts. And what is that we're talking about today? The Lisa Eldridge brand new eyeshadow palettes. Oh my God. Every other beauty channel that you follow has probably already done videos about these palettes. They've done looks, they've done reviews, but it is not complete until I give my two cents. So if that sounds like something you want to hear about, then let's go ahead and jump right into it. So as I mentioned in this video, we're going to talk all about the new Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes. And that's all she calls it. I love the simplicity of it all. She just says these are the eyeshadow palettes. Like, excuse me, a sense of importance. But these are the newly released eyeshadow palettes from Lisa Eldridge. They are available on her website, lisaeldridge.com. And she actually has shipping locations here in the US, so they ship for free because at that price point, they better ship for free. So let me give you some information about the palettes before we jump into the demonstration, the swatches, and my actual review. And I'm going to read this directly from the Lisa Eldridge website, which is so beautifully curated. It's so beautifully designed. And I think it's worth exploring if you want to hear more about these eyeshadows, the formulation, if you want to see swatches on various skin tones. Let me tell you right now, that is the place to be because Lisa has really worked hard to provide as much information as possible and showcase her cosmetics in the most elegant and informative way. It's just one of the best websites I've ever visited. I've never come away feeling like I don't know enough about the product to decide whether or not I'm going to pick it up. And this is written in Lisa Eldridge's voice. It says here, five ultra chic and playful eyeshadow palettes housed in beautiful, bespoke, slim and elegant compacts. Each one contains a curation of six totally harmonious and complementary shades in my own unique, easy to blend, microplastic and talc free high performance formulas. The thoughtfully crafted mirrored compact in my signature soft gold is embossed with my lips monogram in perfect synergy with my aesthetic. The compact features a simple golden seam in keeping with my iconic award winning seamless skin foundation bottle and its ultra slim portable design sits so beautifully in the hand. I wanted my eyeshadow palettes to be a closely edited wardrobe of shades inspired by the self-created palettes I've always carried in my kit with the shades and textures I absolutely rely on. And reading that in Lisa's voice makes me feel as sophisticated as she is. If you haven't checked her out already, what are you waiting for? Definitely check out her channel and her Instagram as well as the website because as I said, there's so much to read there and it's so elegantly put together. And she has a video on her channel that details the full process, the development, her thoughts behind creating her formula and the shade selection. Definitely check her out. And now I'm gonna jump back to my voice, which may not be as elegant as Lisa, but I will try my best. So as mentioned, there are five curated color stories for these eyeshadow palettes and they retail for $68 a piece. They are manufactured in Italy and have a net weight of 5.7 grams or 0.2 ounce of product and there are six shades included in each of the palettes. Which means each of these eyeshadow pans contain roughly 0.033 ounce of product, which is on the smaller side when compared to single eyeshadows on the market, which average at about 0.05. But this sizing actually syncs up with quite a few eyeshadow brands on the market. They tend to hover around the 0.033 mark when it comes to their eyeshadow palettes. So just keep that in mind when considering the value for your money. And before you say it, I know what you're thinking. $68 is quite a steep price point for a six pan eyeshadow palette. 
especially considering other eyeshadow palettes on the market. From Natasha Denona, you can get a 15 pan eyeshadow palette for $69. You can also get a Huda Beauty 18 pan eyeshadow palette for around the same price point, if not less. And of course, there's a variety of price points to choose from on the market, but Miss Lisa Eldridge here places herself in the luxury arena. So when you think Lisa, think Chanel and Dior and Givenchy and those types of price points, which gives a little bit more context to this actual price point, but we'll get into that a little further on into the video. The packaging. Oh my God. Starting off with the boxes that these come in, which are signature Lisa Eldridge. They're white cardboard boxes with the Lisa Eldridge logo, which is the monogram lip. Oh, it's so cute. In gold lettering on the front of the box. On the back, you have the eyeshadow palette name, along with the ingredient details for each of the shades, which will have a different formulation based on the finish. These, again, are made in Italy, and they have an intended usage life of 24 months, which is good to see that we're not hovering around that 12 or 18 month shelf life because we wanna go ahead and get full use out of our palettes, especially at that price point. And another thing to note is that these are eyeshadow palettes, which means all the ingredients used in these eyeshadows are safe for use around the eyes, which is something we have to be a little bit more mindful of these days, where we have pressed pigment palettes versus eyeshadow palettes. These ingredients are all eye safe. Now let's look at the actual palettes. Again, this is a bespoke design, which means it's unique to Lisa Eldridge. It is in her signature brushed gold finish, and it is absolutely beautiful. We do have the Lisa Eldridge logo, which is the monogram lip on the top of the palette. We have a little bit of a lineation right here that gives that scratch record sound. I love that little touch. And it's also a little bit raised in the middle. I think this is so elegant. It is so beautifully designed. It looks like a luxury palette. On the back, we have a label in gold and black writing on it with all the shade names which sync up with the shade arrangement within the palette. And we have these holes in the back that you can use a pin or a very thin implement to pop the shadows in and out because inside each of these shadows are magnetized. So you can pop them in and out of the palette. You can rearrange as you see fit. You can mix and match the shades from the different palettes or if you pick up the singles. And this is one thing I wanted to know. These are not standard size pans. So your Cleona eyeshadows, which I thought would fit in this palette, do not. They're actually a little bit larger than the Cleona eyeshadows. And also like the Viseart eyeshadows won't fit in these palettes. These are a little bit wider, which I appreciate. So these pans are a wider layout and they are divided by a grid so they don't run into each other. And I think the sizing of these pans is really thoughtful because you're able to use larger brushes in these pans because of the sizing. As mentioned, there is a mirror in the lid and a little plastic insert that actually has a cutout that fits right into the hinge. And so it holds that plastic in place and the plastic has the Lisa Eldridge logo on it as well. This packaging is very thin, very sleek, and as mentioned, it fits really beautifully in the hands. It is a great travel palette because it is so thin and sleek. You can grab it, throw it in your bag, throw it in your travel makeup case. Really elegant design. And there is just a very seamless lip hair that you use to open the palette and it is magnetized. Now it's not a strong magnet, so be careful if you do travel with this. Just slip it in between like a pocket or next to another product that will keep it closed. But I mean, come on, this design, nothing less than what I would expect from Lisa Eldridge. I really love the packaging. Now all the shades in these palettes are also available as singles. So if there's a shade that really speaks to you from a palette, but you don't want to get the full palette, you can grab that shade as a single and each of these retail for $16, which again is a steeper price point, but 
it beats having to buy the full palette if you're only interested in one or two shades and I did go ahead and pick up six shades of the singles which actually didn't work out for me because I ended up spending $96 for the singles and each of the palettes cost $68 so I ended up spending $24 extra to get the shades as singles rather than in a palette and then I had to put them in my own magnetic palette but you win some, you lose some. And the eyeshadow singles also come in these beautiful white cardboard envelopes with the Lisa Eldridge logo, but this time it's in black. And you unfold the envelope to reveal the eyeshadow shade inside. Everything is cardboard and fully recyclable, which I appreciate. Kudos to you, Lisa. And you will have to pop these shades in your own magnetic palette and you can also swap them out with different shades in the eyeshadow compacts. Now the one drawback about these eyeshadow singles is that they don't have a label on the back. It's simply a pan of eyeshadow. So unless you memorize the shade or you do your own version of labeling, you won't know what shade this is, which only really matters if you're like a content creator and you need to share what shade you're using on your eyelids because you will get those questions. Otherwise, if it's just for your personal use and you don't care, then it's not a big deal. But what I did was actually go ahead and cut the label that was on the back of the boxes for the eyeshadow singles and those have the names on them so I just trimmed them in a way that I could include the name and the finish for future reference. That's just a little tip that I want to share with you that I did to personalize these shadows myself because I need to know the shades, okay? I'm a content creator. Y'all won't ask me what color I'm using on my eyes and I want to be able to share that information with you. All right spoken enough let's jump into the swatches shall we because I went ahead and picked up three of these eyeshadow palettes and I want to show you them in all their glory and I also picked up a few of the singles which actually ended up pretty much being a fourth palette most of these shades are from the myth palette so let me go ahead and show you the swatches so first up is the Vega eyeshadow palette which is a smoky and celestial composition of multi-dimensional cool and neutral tones that will take you from day to starry night the cool and neutral grays and taupes in this palette form a naturally defined 90 supermodel look which can be built up to a classy smoky eye using the light catching metallic mink, luminous silver and inky matte black for stellar dimension. Inspired by graphic optical artistry and illusionism and the infinite nature of the galaxy, this palette offers never ending possibilities to sculpt and shine. The shades included are French Grey, which is a velvet, it's described as a light neutral stone. Smoke and Mirrors, which is a seamless matte, is described as a medium deep cool grey slate. Moon Swirl is a satin metallic and is described as a cool silvery mink taupe. Turbulence is another seamless matte and is described as a cool medium brown. Supernova is a luminous finish and it is described as a silver with rose pink and silver sparkles. Lamp Black is a seamless matte and is described as a true matte. And I also picked up one of the neutral palettes, which is Cinnabar. It says here, the powerful warm tones of the Cinnabar eyeshadow palette are as if drawn from the earth itself. A sophisticated, rich composition of warm base shades that deliver a myriad of looks from light caramel to intense, deep, earthy browns and lustrous bronze. Lisa says she was inspired by the ancient natural pigments that our earth has to offer, particularly historic paint colors and art to create this full-bodied color palette. Included is raw sienna, which is a seamless matte. It is described as a light caramel. Bronzite is a satin metallic. It's described as a rich warm bronze. Fired earth is a seamless matte. It's described as a deep warm earth brown. Lost summer is a satin metallic and it's described as a warm copper. Deep ochre is a velvet and is described as rich earthy brown. Ritual is a top coat which is described as a soft light gold with warm sparkly pearls. And being who I am, you know I'm going to get the most colorful palette and this happens to be a more jewel tone smoky palette. So this is Sorcery which is inspired by medieval tales and legends. Sorcery is a story of the magicians, fairs and fantasy of the Middle Ages. 
This palette really does what it says on the tin. It's just magic. Be spellbound by this precious curation of multifaceted jewel tones that all have the drama of a peacock's tail, perfect for bold evening looks. Taking alchemy to artistry, the colors and textures in this palette from jewel tones to shifting duochrome have to be seen to be believed. Included is Troubadour, which is a seamless matte, which is a deep inky teal. Grotto is a metallic. It's described as a cool emerald green. Madrigal is metallic and it's a blackened antique green gold. Mercurial is a luminous finish and it is described as a prismatic green to heather duochrome. Mage is a satin metallic which is described as a pale silvery sage green gray with icy blue pink gold and green pearls and swan song which is a satin metallic and this one is described as a rich sapphire blue. Now moving on to the singles that I picked up which the majority are from the Myth palette starting with Faded Amethyst which is a satin metallic and it's described as a smoky and lustrous taupey amethyst. Then we have Mauve Decade which is a velvet and it's described as a muted gray lavender. Then we have Vintage Mulberry. This is a velvet. This shade is from the Muse palette. It is described as a deep plum brown. Followed by Violet Stone which is a velvet and this is described as a pure violet. Then we have Victorian Trim which is a velvet and is described as a rich and brown vibrant mulberry. And then last up we have Nocturama which is a velvet and is described as a deep blackened violet. So the only shade I'm missing from the Myth palette would be the top coat shade which is illusionism and that one is described as a transparent base with ultraviolet sparkly pearls. All right now that you've seen the swatches you probably have a better idea of the various finishes that are available from this lineup but I want to read you the description from the website so you understand like what each finish means. So there's six different finishes and you'll find different combinations depending on the palette that you pick up or the singles. We have a seamless matte, which is a soft matte texture with a touch of luminosity that practically blends itself. It's perfect for adding depth and dimension to the eye, apply to the socket or lash line for a subtle day look or build for a full smoky effect. So this is supposed to be similar to your typical matte eyeshadow. Then we have the velvet finish that is described as a super creamy matte powder paint that grips and adheres beautifully to the skin with a smooth smooth and finish and even coverage. This can be applied with fingers or a brush. Then we have the more shimmery finishes starting out with Luminous which is a medium payoff semi-transparent base that can be applied with a light hand for a wash of luminosity or with fingertips for an intense glossy lid top coat effect. We have Metallic which is ranging from satin smooth densely packed soft metallic shine to full on glittery molten metallic depending on the shade. Apply with fingers for full opacity or as a wash with a brush. Next up we have Luster which says here the densely packed smooth and extra small pearls gives this texture a soft luminous pearly finish. And then last up is the top coat finish which is multicolored sparkling pearls suspended in a transparent base. This minimal pigment formula is great for bringing a touch of light to the inner corner of the eye or to add subtle extra dimension to the lid for a finishing touch. And the great thing about the palettes and the singles that I picked up is that I am testing out the majority of the finishes that are available and there are different variations of the metallic that I will give you feedback on. The only finish that I didn't get to test out is the Luster, which is only used for one shade and that is Taffeta Fan. And that one is in the Muse palette, which I didn't pick up and the single is also sold out. So I'm just gonna have to make an educated guess on how that finish performs because I don't have it to test out. All right, with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into a demonstration. Now I already did a look with the Vega and Cinnabar palettes, but it was a get ready with me style. So if you wanna see that, check it out. But I've been testing out these palettes because I really wanted to get a feel for the formulations before I gave you this review. But of course, I have to demonstrate how these apply to the eye so you guys can get a feel in this video for how these perform. So I'm going to use Sorcery, which is what I'm wearing on my eyes right now. So let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration of these shadows. 
All right, so my eyes are already prepped and primed. I went in with my Macalane Low Paint Pot all over my eyelids. And of course, my brows are also filled in. So let's go ahead and jump right into this look. And I'm going to mix the palettes because as you'll see in the Cinnabar palette and you saw from the swatches, there is a transition shade in this palette but there's none in Sorcery, which I want to do a look mainly using the shades in Sorcery, but I need some transition shades. So I am going to grab the Cinnabar palette and I'm going to use the shade Raw Sienna, which is a seamless matte and it's more of a caramelly tone. This shade matches my skin tone pretty well, so I'm just going to buff it in the crease. And I'm using a dense natural hair brush. This is the soft concealer brush from Sonia G. And you'll see this color doesn't really show up on my skin tone. You'll see I'm blending it in, but it looks like I'm really applying nothing. So this could be a transition blending shade if you're my complexion or an all over lid shade, but I'm just blending that out to give ourselves something to blend up against. And to be fair, that's not a step that you necessarily have to take with these shadows because they kind of blend themselves. So they're not as intense as other shades that I've used. But I'm a creature of habit and it's just something that I always do so that's why I did it. Next let's grab the palette Sorcery and I'm going to grab the shade Troubadour which is the seamless matte. It's the really dark shade here that looks almost black. It's not a black shade though. It's like a deep black and teal green, even like a forest green. It probably isn't as teal as I'm thinking but as you blend it out, it will kind of blow out into a lighter shade and you'll see the green pop out. It won't look as black as it does in the pan. And I'm using again a stiffer blending brush. This is from Sonia Kashuk this time. It's just their crease brush. And the bristles are short and densely packed together so it's not a fluffy brush. And I'm just going to use buffing motions to go around the crease with that color and blend it out. And as you can tell, the color in the pan, again, looks black, but blend it out, it just looks like a sooty teal or green shade. What I find is that I have to go back into the pan to pick up color if I want intensity. So if you're looking for intense color payoff right out the gate, you're not going to get it. But if you're somebody who prefers to build up color, then this will be a great formulation for you to work with. And as you can see, they kind of blend out really easily with just a couple of passes. You're not just sitting here blending forever to get that fade, kind of blurs out on its own. But with that being said, can you get added depth by going back and forth or is there gonna be some trouble here building up dimension? Also, picking up the shade from the eyeshadow pan, there's no powder kick up. So there's no excess powder that's just floating all over the pan. You're just getting the color directly on the brush and you'll see that you're able to build up depth and dimension. You'll see this one is more blended, this one has more depth. So I'm just going to keep building until I get the depth that I'm going for, which tends to be a pretty deep outer V. I love a smoky look, especially a smoky colorful outer V, stop it, like a dark navy blue or green or purple. And let me come up a little bit closer so you can see the blend. You'll see the depth that we were able to create, but again, there's a blur in at the edges. That's what we're looking for. And let me show you what the pan looks like as well. So remember I said there's no powder kick up, but there's kind of hard pan on top of the shadow as you go back and forth and pick up color. Now you and I both know that I'm not gonna get away without using the blue. So let's go ahead and grab Swan Song, which took me about four tries to say, oh my God. So this is the metallic blue. I'm grabbing that on a Sonia G Builder brush. And again, there is no kickback in the eyeshadow pan and also no excess powder on the brush. And I'm just going to pack that on the outer lid space. I'm trying to use as many of the colors, so I'm not going to pull it too far in. I'm just blending it in with the dark outer V. And that was kind of effortless, right? Now let's grab some of the dark green, which is Grotto. Again, this is a metallic. Same brush again. 
and we're gonna pop that right next to that blue. This one has a little bit of silver glitter particles to it. They're micro fine, but I can still see them. I'll come up a little bit closer so you can take a look to see if you see them as well, but I'm just blending this next to the blue. It's kind of covering up the blue a bit. Can you see the sparkles that I'm talking about? Yeah, they're like silver sparkles, which is actually not my favorite. All right, since I wanna use the majority of the shades, let's keep going and grab the shade Madrigal, which is also a metallic. This one is like a golden olive. Same brush again, and now I'm gonna Put that on the rest of the lid, but avoiding the inner tear duct. This one also has micro shimmer to it. This one is more gold glitter rather than the silver of the other green. The color looks a little bit dull, right? So I'm gonna try out a trick that I typically do, which is dampen my brush, and then I'll grab the color, which creates kind of a paste, and then go back over that color and that will intensify the shimmer and sheen just a bit because again the color reads a little bit more dull than I wanted it to and let's do that on the other side and with a damp brush the color definitely picks up a lot more intensely it's wow now we're getting the sheen and the shine and again, I'm just blending that out. Oh, I should have skipped the inner tear duct, but just blending that out on the lid in with the green. And I'm going to just go over the green that we applied because I didn't really like how it looked, but I wanted to show you it in the look, which I did, I accomplished that. So I'm gonna go back in with the blue now and apply that back over that outer V and outer C because I want the blue to really show up. The dark green, not my favorite shade, but I love a good blue. So I'm gonna blend that in. The colors build and blend pretty easily. You do have to layer if you want intensity, but I find them to be easy to build up. It's just you're gonna take a little bit more time to build up and I'm just going to blend out the edges with the brush that we'd used originally. All right, I've applied my foundation and concealer, so let's go ahead and finish up the eyes. And do you think I'm gonna get away with using this palette without using the most special shade? So this shade is Mercurial, which is a luminous duo. Ooh. So it's a duochrome in a luminous finish. This is a BK Beauty 210 brush, which is a very fine bullet brush. And I'm a little bit nervous about this color because it seems to be the most packed with glitter. So it's making me a little bit nervous, but it's applying without falling all over the place, which is great. And look at that in, ooh, it's cute. Look at that inner tear duct. It really adds this luminosity. It's this real beautiful pop of shimmer, but it's also not, overwhelming especially on my deeper skin tone it's not stark it's more of a sheer base with a ton of sparkle that is actually really stunning all right let me do some lower lash line work what do you think we should use on the lower lash line i feel like i want to pull in from another palette hold up all right so i'm gonna go ahead and grab the singles that i picked up because i kind of want to use this purple shade right here these are mostly from the myth palette so yeah let's try out the purple which is violet stone and it is a velvet finish and i'm going to grab that on a flat shader brush this is the mac 242 and we're gonna run that on the lash line bring in it all the way to the center of the lash line and the thing about these shades the velvet finish is that they again blend out at the edge so the lash line looks a little bit deeper and richer and you do have to build up if you want the color it's looking again more like a muted smoky purple i also want to grab this dark shade which is noctorama this is a deep blackened violet and it's a velvet finish as well. Using the same brush, let's go on that outer lower lash line to deepen up and smoke out just that portion. 
and leave the purple on the rest of the lower lash line. And to finish up, let's go back to the sorcery palette and I'm going to grab the last metallic, which is mage. Back to the BK 210. Pop in that on the inner lower lash line. That did a whole lot of nothing, so let's dampen the brush and try that again. This is more of like a silvery shade. Yeah, I guess that will do. Once I put on mascara, I'm hoping this will look a little bit more pulled together and a little bit cuter. This is actually a really beautiful subtle shade that I would use on the inner tear duct. Again, it's not too stark even though it's silvery. So these two shades, the lighter shades from the palette, these two, I would definitely utilize as inner tear duct highlights. All right, mascara time. I'm gonna apply mascara, finish up my face, and show you the final look. All right, so here we have the final look. I went ahead and finished up my face and I paired this look with the matching lipstick and lip pencil from the line. So these are in the shade Saucery. Velvet Saucery is the matte lipstick that I'm wearing and the liner is also Saucery. So here you have the eye look, which I think is very pretty. It's not as sparkly or in your face as some other looks that I've done, but it's still very pretty and I think it was easy to accomplish and the shadows are beautiful. So let me go ahead now and finish up with my final thoughts about these eyeshadow palettes. All right, so now that you have seen the packaging up close, you've seen the swatches, you've seen the demonstration, you've heard all the information from the Lisa Eldridge website, we've talked about all the finishes, we can now jump into my personal thoughts about these eyeshadow palettes, the formulation, the performance, and whether or not I think these are worth your dime. So, shall we talk about it? Yes, let's do it. Starting out with the price point. Do we need to discuss the price point? I don't think we do, okay? They're $68. There's no change in the price point, all right? It's either you're gonna pick them up or you're not. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to try to convince you that $68 is worth it for a six pan eyeshadow palette. I don't care who makes the eyeshadows. I don't care if they have gold incorporated in that. I don't care. $68 is pricey. So at the end of the day, it's whether or not you're comfortable paying for that. Point blank, period. I could not say anything that would make these worth $68 as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's not a bad price point if you price it up per eyeshadow and blah, 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 blah. It's still $68 for a six pan eyeshadow palette, all right? And the singles aren't any better because they're $16 a pop, which is actually more expensive buying them as singles rather than in the palette. So my recommendation, based on what I did to myself, is to pick up an eyeshadow palette if you're interested in four or more shades in the palette. It's a better bang for your buck that way, rather than doing what I stupidly did, which was pick up four shades that I was interested in from the Myth palette, right? And then I went ahead and got two more shades, which really would be one full palette. It's six shades, right? But I spent $96 on those six shades. So don't be me, okay? Pick up a palette rather than a single, unless you're picking up a single shade, okay? Or maybe two. But don't do what I did. If you're doing more than two or three single shades, just pick a palette, all right, and go for it. At the end of the day, it's really up to you if you're comfortable paying that steep price point for a six pan eyeshadow palette and whether or not it's in your budget. Simple as that. Now let's talk about the packaging, which is absolutely beautiful. Everything about this packaging is exactly how Lisa describes it. They're elegant. They're sleek, they're chic, they're beautiful. They're not heavy, which I don't care about a palette being heavy, okay? It's weighted enough where I don't feel like it's a throwaway little cheap plastic design, okay? This is bespoke, which means, okay, it's a unique design to Lisa Eldridge. This is her creation and it fits so perfectly with her collection. The gold color, fantastic. The slim design, fantastic it does fit in the hand. And even though it's small and sleek and handheld, the eyeshadow pans 
are nicely sized to fit a variety of brushes, which I think is key when it comes to eyeshadows. They're palettes that I just don't want to use because they have those little dinky pens in them and I'm like, ugh, it feels like kids makeup. These are elegant. They're nicely sized. You're going to be able to use any size brush in these eyeshadow palettes. They're fantastic. And on the back, you have a label with the shade names like, come on, like, everything is so well done. And they're magnetized. So you can pop them out. Okay, let me grab a magnet. You can pop her out. Okay. And go ahead, swap out other shades, mix and match as you see fit. Again, other eyeshadows won't fit in here, which is a little bit of a drawback. I wish they would fit other eyeshadows because I'll be walking around with these palettes nonstop. And I do hope that in the future, she will have these empty palettes available because I bought singles and now I have to put them in this ugly palette when I really want to put them in one of these compacts. But packaging, hands down, fantastic, beautiful, matches up with everything else in her line. And the gold isn't like a bright yellow gold that's gaudy or anything. This is elegant. It's, it's really well done. So A plus for the packaging. Now let's talk about purchasing, which covers the accessibility and availability of these products. These are available for purchase on the Lisa Eldridge website only, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon because her products sell out so quickly that I don't know that she can keep up production to have it available on other websites. So for now, you can only purchase these products on her website, which as I mentioned before, is so elegantly designed. You have all the information you could need. It's easy to navigate. You have pricing in Euro as well as USD because of course Lisa Eldridge is British so her products have to be available in the EU but then the US is also a big market and she has distribution centers here in the US so we get free shipping especially with these price points like come on there's free shipping and you get the products pretty quickly except if there's like a hold up with some of the orders which I did experience with one order from her it took a few days to get to me, but all my other orders got to me pretty quickly. And by that, I mean within three days from order to at my door. So they have great shipping in the US just based on my experience. And sometimes there is a little bonus gift with purchase if you buy a certain number of items. So this time around with three items or more, you got a free pink velvet bag. And these bags are available for purchase on the website as well under accessories. But I got it free with my purchase, which I absolutely adore these bags for travel. They are really cute, they're really high quality, and I love that. So the shopping experience on the Lisa Eldridge website is actually one that I enjoy. But that's not what you wanna hear about. That's not what we wanna talk about. You wanna talk about the actual product and the performance, right? All right, let's get into it. I feel like I'm about to give a very unpopular opinion about these eyeshadow palettes, but I have to stick to my guns and say how I truly feel about these eyeshadow palettes. I don't like them that much. <laughs> did I just say that? Yes, I did. I don't like the eyeshadows that much. Oh my God, not based on the price point, all right? So... Let's talk about each of the finishes really quickly. We have the Seamless Matte and the Velvet, which honestly, same difference, all right? There is supposed to be a little bit more luminosity to the Velvet shades. I don't really see or feel a difference between these two textures, so I'm just going to group them together. And from the description on the website and my experience, these are definitely more of a putty formula almost a cream to powder formula, but they're more putty-like. They don't have a traditional powder matte feel to them. There's no real product kick up when you rub your brush into the pan, which is a good thing because you're not wasting too much product, but then you're almost tempted to rub too hard, which can then create chunks of product that will then flake off, so just be careful with that. You just need to rub on the top. But rubbing on the top creates kind of a film or a hard pan, which I don't like because it makes it more difficult to pick up the eyeshadow and then you're tempted to push harder, which again can create those chunks that can then waste the eyeshadow. So I don't really like that. 
and I find these eyeshadows a little bit difficult to pick up on a brush. You have to use more of a dense bristle brush or a brush with some texture to the bristles to really pick up the shades. I would recommend a natural hair brush over a synthetic brush because a synthetic brush is gonna create more of that hard pan, right? It's gonna create that film on top. A natural hair brush will have a little texture to the cuticle which will pick up the product a little bit better and if you really want to pick up product, use a denser, stiffer brush. And that's what I found I had to do with these eyeshadows. And you saw in the demonstration that I had to keep going back and forth to build up color because not a lot of product picks up on the brush. So you kind of have to build and build and build. But the eyeshadows blend effortlessly. So it's like a catch-22, right? They build and blend easily so they'll work well for a beginner or someone that likes a very subtle look to their eyeshadow. But if you want more color impact, you're going to have to keep building and building to get the color payoff, which actually takes a longer time. So it's like... I don't want to have to keep building and blending, right? Even though the blend is so easy and effortless, I keep having to pack on shadows, so that's a drawback for me. The metallic and satin shades vary a little bit in their intensity and in their luminosity. So you have some that are more satin shades that are just low shine, low sheen, and you have some that are more metallic and shiny that are gonna be more intense and then you also have shades that have micro glitter in them like the shades I used in the demonstration they have that micro fine shimmer and glitter that I don't even really like I just like a metallic sheen on my lids so these wouldn't be my preference for metallic eyeshadows I don't want silver sparkle I don't want gold sparkle all right I want a metallic eyeshadow that's what I want I want a frost eyeshadow I don't want to deal with glitter but the glitter is cosmetically elegant so it's not like chunky glitter that's flying in your eyes so I can you know I can vibe I can get along with them but I prefer if they were just like a high sheen metallic but you know it is what it is depending on what you're into then we also have the luminous finish which I also tried from the saucery palette that one is mercurial which is one of the most interesting shades because it's also a duochrome that is gorgeous so in this palette let me just talk about this palette specifically i like the color of the seamless matte i just don't like the effort that it takes to build it up but i'll work with it because i like the color i like the luminous duo which is mercurial because of that duochrome effect and it's beautiful on the inner tear duct let me tell you right now stunning shade on the inner tear duct i can see myself using that more I also like Mage, which is this silvery shade. It's not a stark silver, and I can use that on the inner tear duct, but it's not like a really special shade at all. I don't like the green shade Grotto. I just don't like the silver glitter in it. Just no, I can do without it. And I don't even really like the Swan Song shade, which is the blue, which you think I would like because I love blues, but this blue is just dull and muted, and I'm just not having fun with it. And the Madrigal shade is probably one of my favorite shades in the palette. So truly, I only feel like there are two great shades in this palette. The other ones, I can do without. For Cinnabar, what a disappointment. I thought this was going to be a lot better than it was. The matte shades, first of all, this raw sienna, it don't even show up. Like, where is it? What? Where, what are we doing here? The other two velvet matte shades, they're okay, but again, the hard pan just make them difficult to work with. The shimmer shades are okay, but they're just okay. So it's like, I could do without this palette. And then Vega, I find the same problem. This one, I can show you where I was creating chunks of eyeshadow by digging a little bit too hard. So you'll see in this shade and this shade, I had to press the chunks back into place. But yeah, I was pressing a little bit too hard because I wasn't getting color. And then that is the result. You can also see the hard pen that's created. I showed you that in the demo. But that's what you can expect from some of these shades. From this palette, I will say the best performer is Moon Swirl, which is a beautiful taupe. The shades, I think, are beautiful. It's just the formulations. I expected a little bit more. But then again, it's Lisa Eldridge. And Lisa Eldridge is about luxury and red carpet look so she's going to go for formulations that are subtle and beautiful and they're not just like in your face pop out you know 
she's gonna give you a little bit more pulled back a little bit more subtle a little bit more muted and I don't mind that because I think there is definitely a place for that and I'll continue to use these but if I had to go back and if I didn't have a YouTube channel I would not have picked these up and I don't think they're worth picking up for the average makeup user these are definitely for someone who is a Lisa Eldridge fan or is just a makeup fan and you want to try out the formulation. Other than that, I don't think there's anything special about these. In fact, they may be a little bit more trouble than they're worth. They're only like a couple of shades from the entire lineup that I would say are worth checking out as singles. But as far as the palettes go, you can skip them, especially if you're my complexion. I think these may be better suited for lighter skin tones that aren't looking for intense pigmentation, that don't have to build up color to show up on their eyes. These may be right up your alley, and if you're a beginner as well. But if you're a beginner, don't spend $68 on these palettes. I just, I just can't, I just can't bring myself to say these are worth it. And if they had blown me away, like if the performance and the shades and everything was fantastic, then I would have felt a little bit more comfortable. But nothing about these are really special outside of the packaging and the Lisa Eldridge name. I know, I know, that sounds so terrible, but that's honestly how I feel. I won't reach for these over any of my other eyeshadow palettes. And that's what I used to gauge how impressed I am by an eyeshadow palette. Is this a palette that I'm going to reach for over everything else I have in my collection? Over all the other eyeshadow formulations I've tried, will these be the ones that I reach for? No, okay? I would rather use my Dior eyeshadow palettes over these, but I'm still gonna use them, don't get me wrong, and I'll probably just curate my perfect selection of shades and go with that, but I just don't see myself reaching for these that often. I'm happy I got to try them out and test them out for you guys, but as for me and my personal collection, they don't really add any value. So there you have it. Those are my final thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. And don't come for me if you disagree. These are just my personal thoughts. And I hope I was able to give you enough information and the swatches and the demonstration for you to get a feel for if these would fit your makeup aesthetic and your style. Maybe you're into subtle, maybe you're into more muted, maybe you're looking for an everyday palette and you're ready to plop down $70. I don't know, like maybe that's your thing, <laughs> like your jam. I ain't gonna judge you, like do what you do, but I just feel like you can find similar performing eyeshadows at a cheaper price point. Those are my two cents, I'm gonna shut up now. I will leave all the details down below on where you can pick these up along with links that will not be an affiliate link but I will leave my affiliate links down below in case you want to shop through Sephora, Ulta, Bloomingdale's, Macy's, Mac and so on. I also have links to indie brands where you can shop through and those are all affiliated and there are also some discount codes that you guys can use to get a little bit of a discount on some of your purchases. I will also leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you can follow me along and let me know what you guys think. Are you interested in these phones? Are you gonna pick them up? Y'all let me know because I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm gonna shut up now because that's, yeah, okay, all right. Bye guys.